Hello everybody, this is Kevin back with Inspiring How You See That. Today we're doing the exploring segment area and we are back in Chapel Hill at the Forest uh, Park, uh, right by next to the lake in Chapel Hill. And we're kind of doing a segment here in front of the helicopter that's on display within this park. They have a boat ozer and a few other things. Um, of course, this helicopter was one of the helicopters that were used to just fly over, uh, review the, the park, make sure there was no issues or anything, just a safety helicopter basically. Um, of course, they do have it all locked up. There's really nothing we can show you or look at. Uh, I mean, we, we do uh, actually do work on these uh, helicopters myself as far as the outside work and the inside work if they need uh, any servicing work on it. But this, this one, you know, has been sitting here for a while and it was one that was actually flown, but they have taken off several components and parts. It looks like the jet engine's still in it, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, so I just wanted to talk, you know, a little bit about and just kind of show you guys some of this this area. It looks like somebody's smashed the back light area of it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's all pretty much almost intact. Uh, they got it all strapped down and everything. Um, the engine is still fully in it. Uh, so, but everything on the inside is fully either gutted or rotted away. So it's not uh, not in the bestest of shape. But yeah, the whole inside's all rotted away. All the Most of the instrument components are still in there besides some of the gauges. It looks like somebody's probably taken out some of the gauges, some of the other components. Uh, but it's more or less just a display thing from the forest uh, service department here in North Carolina. And we'll, we'll walk around. I'll show you some of the area and kind of do like we do a lot within these forest, you know, park areas and visits and just kind of take you through, show you some of the area and just kind of do an overview. So we'll keep walking around and then we'll get down to the lake. Okay, so as when we walk through, just like all of our other exploring scenes, we'll just kind of, you know, just go through it very quickly. Um, we won't go through every little detail. This park actually has several trails. Now, the mileage is not marked for this um, park as far as how many miles it is. What's really cool is we go through this park, we will play, this is as it says, it's an educational park. So there are several trees or next to the trees that have little uh, intercoms that tell you about the tree and the park. So we'll play those and they did build uh, some cabins. There's another spider there. There's a lot of spiders in this uh, as you walk through the trails. Um, but the uh, trees do talk to you and tell you a little bit about the uh, trees in the area and what kind of trees they are. And we wanted to share that with you guys and kind of especially, you know, if you have kids and like to travel and just kind of stop off and take a break and walk through some trails. This is a great trail to check out and kind of navigate through and have some fun with. It's it's pretty, pretty quiet there um, as you go through the trails and there's not it's not too, too loud. Um, as far as some of the parks, you know, where there's quite a few visitors. That's one thing that we noticed when we were in North Carolina and Virginia. A lot of the parks are huge, um, so it's pretty spread out. Here's one of those trees. Forests mean many things to many people. I'm a loblolly pine. To some people, I'm primarily a timber tree that's used for lumber, pulpwood, and plywood. To others, I'm a home for wildlife, or I'm good for keeping soil in place. Forests can be maintained for those reasons, and also for water conservation, recreation, and beauty. The forest you are now in is managed for all these reasons, but it's called an educational forest because it's used to help visitors better understand the value of forest land. You can learn lots of neat things here too, like how to tell how old a tree is or how to help wildlife thrive in the forest. The North Carolina Division of Forest Resources is working with many state and federal agencies to manage our forest for timber, wildlife, soil and water conservation, and recreation. We call those stewardship forests. To be called a stewardship forest is a real honor here in North Carolina. Just ask the ranger if you want to learn more about the stewardship forest program. So that was one of those trees, of course, that talked, you know, that's the lake um, that is out there. What I did notice is there's no pass out to the lake. You have, there's, a, there's another entrance on the other side of the park. Um, to that lake area. So you can get to it, but as you see the trails go around, basically around the lake, you have to walk through the woods quite far to get to the back side of the lake. And the back side of the lake 
is pretty swampy on that side. So the better side we would recommend uh, you drive to and check out, uh, check it out that way. Um, as we walk through this other side of the trail, again, we'll find a few more trees. We'll play those trees for you. Kind of let you listen to those uh, trees and tell you a little bit about the forest. So the area is fully covered with several, you know, of course, pine trees. I mean, you are in North Carolina or Virginia, um, but it's it's very uh, well marked, as always, when we go to the other trees. And then here's another one of the talking trees, and we'll listen to that one. Hi, I'm a loblolly pine. Can you tell the difference between me and other trees in the forest? Once you get the hang of it, tree identification is easy and fun. Trees can be identified the same way people are, by their outward appearances. While people are of different heights and have different hair and skin, trees are identified by their fruits, leaves, bark, and buds. Since my leaves actually are needles, you can easily identify me as a pine. I can be distinguished from other types of pine by my height, bark, and the number of my needles and their length. To some people, I'm primarily a timber tree, used for lumber, pulpwood, and plywood. To others, I am home for wildlife, or I'm used to keep soil in place. Forests can be managed for those reasons, as well as for water conservation, recreation, and beauty. Ask the forest rangers about me and a tree identification book. And remember, trees, like people, are never the same. So as we end up, the, you know, kind of the conclusion of the trail, there's a couple more talking trees. We'll let you guys listen to those. But as always, make sure you do, you know, let us know in the comments if there's a specific area that you're you're wanting us to check out or a park that uh, you haven't been to that you're thinking of going to. And we'll we'll discover, you know, and check out that segment and see, you know, see what that's like. Hello, I'm Southern Red Oak, one of the most rugged woods used by man. Just look back in time to see how stable and strong I am. Structures built out of oak by gladiators, crusaders, and conquistadors are still well preserved because of my strength. No wonder oak is perhaps the most familiar hardwood in the world. My wood is great for making furniture because it's easy to shape. It also forms well to make truck body parts and boat and ship parts. I grow mainly on uplands with dry soil. You'll generally find me alone or in small groups with other hardwoods or occasionally with pine trees. Look at me carefully. Note my rough bark and distinctive leaves. If you look closely, you'll find me in lots of different sizes as you continue your walk. To learn more about us trees, ask the forest ranger about a tree identification book. That was another talking tree there as I was going into, you know, talking about letting us, you know, know about uh, some of the areas. But again, do let us know um, some of these areas that uh, you want us to check out or explore. And we'll definitely get down to that area and try to check that out, whether it's in the United States or even if it's out of the country. We'll talk about um, some of those areas out of the country if we can get over to those uh, areas and discover and film some of it and kind of do a quick history segment of that area. And as we go through, this will be the last uh, segment part where you get to listen to one of the educational trees. And we hope you enjoy this segment, and we'll see you on the next one. Hi, I'm a sourwood tree. Exactly what you'd call a beautiful tree, what with my trunk all twisted and curvy. But there's a reason I grow this way. I'm geotropic. That's a fancy way of saying I always reach straight up. When I lean more than 10 degrees in any one direction, my trunk sends out branches that begin growing straight up. Since I'm short and live underneath all these other tall trees, I have a hard time getting enough sunlight to produce the food I need. So I have to reach up toward the sun as far as I can. People have known about my vertical branches for centuries. In fact, early settlers used to make fences out of them. The pioneers would cut me halfway through, then push me to the ground and leave my trunk attached to my roots. When I was on the ground like this, my branches grew straight up from the trunk. When my branches became large enough, the pioneers would weave vines through them, and presto, they had a fence. But it didn't happen overnight. Aren't you glad we don't have to make fences that way today?